What is going on, Lunatic Fringe? The narrative has always been, can we get to a penny? Can we get to a dime? Can we get to a dollar with Luna Classic? We've had travesty after tragedy after occurrence that has caused a massive FUD campaign or something always seems to happen for Luna Classic that changes the narrative, despite that we continue to build in this market. And the question now becomes, is any of that possible anymore? And I want to lead off with, yes, it is possible. However, let's take a look around and then let's summarize that at the end. Now, uh, before we get started, if you like this content, please make sure that you hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell to be notified of future content, because that certainly helps the channel if you like this content. But the first thing that we're going to do is go over a few pieces here. We're going to remind you where we are right now. Uh, after nearly two years of the, after, after two years of the implosion of the Terra ecosystem, Terraform Labs has now filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the United States amidst the legal battle inside this country with the SEC. This will allow them to continue to operate and to do whatever it is that they need to do, such as buying um, uh, new projects or funding projects, continuing to build their ecosystem in Luna. Uh, and recall that the crypto trading platform Crypto.com announced plans to delist uh, Terra last week. Following that that uh, filing, they also delisted Luna Classic as well. However, I do think both of those things were going to happen no matter what for Crypto.com to be in compliance, but not great news. So do we get to a penny, dime, or dollar with that? Yeah, probably not. Uh, then you move on to Terra Classic news, and we realize that Terra Classic now burned 95 billion tokens overall. And I want to say that's not a lot. That's since May of 2022. That's not a, a tremendous amount or a significant amount, but the one thing that's continued to be a thorn in the side has been the repeg. So without a repeg, what is where's all this burn coming from? And the answer to that is because it's on chain, uh, or, or I'm sorry, it's on centralized exchange, I should say. And Binance is the one that's burning most of it. Uh, they've contributed about 50 billion Luna Classic to the total burn. Uh, contributing over 51.7% until now. There are also a few other exchanges that have been doing a little bit of burning as well. But generally speaking, uh, that's what it is right now. So, uh, and this was their 17th batch. Uh, the 18th batch comes in about three or four days. Should be not as significant because trading volume has been. So uh, we'll keep you posted when we know the numbers for that one. Uh, in the community proposals, now we have a, a that's been a little bit different. And in fact, when we go to the station and look at the governance, you'll see what I'm talking about. But uh, adopt the pay per job according to the proposals. Adapt, I'm sorry. Uh, signal to provide incentives and liquidity on white whale decks. Reduce the slashing window for Oracle voting and increase downtime jailing. Uh, taxes to gas work uh, is not done by the L1 team. There's a lot of discussions and a lot of questions that are going on right now because nobody really has a clear understanding of exactly how everything's working. And do you know what the Luna Classic team slash community does? Nothing. They, 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 don't, they don't notify you of anything. You have no idea what's going on unless you uh, can decipher what's going on with each and every one of these proposals. There's no summary anymore. So you have no idea what's going on. But let's continue. Um, then uh, you have the station, which they're requesting to repeal the proposal 11889, which was pay per job. Now, what's happening with that voting? Well, for some reason, there's a massive amount of no or abstain on it so far. And I would behoove you, go look at who's voting for what. Because if you remember, just days ago, I told you these validators, they do not want progress. They want to hold your Luna Classic they want to accumulate your Luna Classic. They want to give you a tiny reward and a little taste off of that. And then what they want to do is they want to accumulate more for themselves because eventually at some point down the road, it becomes profitable for them to allow, if you will, for the building uh, to, to go on. So there's a plan, but that plan doesn't involve you. That plan involves using you to just continue staking. Now, um, Taking that a step further here, uh, the L1 TF Terra Classic Core Security Upgrade Package does not look like it's going to pass. 30% uh, yes, 49.8% no. Um, 
uh, if you come down here, it really counts it. This proposal marks the JL1TS initial request for 25500 up upfront, representing half of the total budget requested. This amount is intended to cover our initial setup costs and serves as a retainer fee. Now, um, they're outright voting no, and 20% are voting to abstain because they don't want progress. They, they, they're trying to prevent you from, they don't want all one TF to progress anything. They don't want, um, and, and by the way, when I say that, I should clarify because I don't want to just pay people for nothing to begin. Um, I, you know, you would want to, but it's fair to ask for compensation. So they fairly asked for compensation and been told no, but this is the L1 task force that does the security upgrade package. And now they don't even want to do the security on it. Um, and that, by the way, those are your validators. They don't want security um, on, on Terra Classic. And they don't want uh, to change the, the per job approach. They want to maintain everything that keeps us disorganized because that benefits them tremendously. Now, you might disagree with me, by the way. Um, you, you might you might have a, your own reasons here. But let me also point out here, uh, Luna Classic Labs reached out to every one of these validators and was ignored. Happy Caddy Crypto is basically giving up. He's still supporting, but... He's just kind of on the sideline going like WTF, mate, or whatever he says. I have no idea what he really says. But uh, these validators, they do not have your best interest at heart, and you continue to stake with them. Something's going to have to change, and it's not going to be them. It's going to have to be us. So uh, over here, volume is down to $27 million. Uh, USTC volume is down under $10 million. Um, there's, there's no real proposals going on other than, uh, you know, look, we haven't sold. Um, so, you know what I mean? Um, the Lunk Live validator believes in equal opportunity for teams to bid on revitalizing the blockchain. We will support the builders who focus in recovering Lunk, who have good intentions and who support the community. Time to build. So we want some people who can be supported uh, to, to build on Luna Classic. And uh, uh, other than that, and so the question is, can we reach a penny, a dime, a dollar? Now, the answer is penny, probably. It's, you know, a, a little over, uh, I want to call it 100x away. So could that be done? Yeah, could totally be done. Uh, in fact, if you look at the price action right now, you'll see that we had dropped that zero, so to speak, and we're sitting, hovering right around the line. I told you there's going to be a resistance point, and we've got, you know, uh, this 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 entire area is playing out basically kind of as we expect. The, the question is, can we maintain the 200 MA and continue to build and pump off of that? And, you know, it really, the short term won't matter, but long term, we've had a breakout from this channel. Again, we're getting back to the positivity. Now, uh, the market, broadly speaking, uh, is still wondering what's going to go on with Evergrande, which is an Asian, um, a Chinese company that's gone bankrupt. It's a real estate company. So uh, it could be that this affects the, the Asian community dramatically. So we could see some more sell off on Lunkin USTC, but so far it looks like we weathered the storm. So then the question becomes, can we 100X? And the answer to can we 100X is, well, we can't do it without a repeg. We're not going to do it without a repeg. Uh, there's too many tokens that are still left, you know. So um, what is the operable solution here? And it's going to be the repeg. And we're being told by anybody who would listen that, well, we can't do that yet. Um, and it's not because the chain won't support it. Um, it's because we're not working on, it. you know, if you guys go back and, and look at what happened. You remember Redline Drifter and I had an exchange not that long ago about this and they submitted a proposal and put it on GitHub for the centralized exchanges to check it out and see what they're going to do. You know, this is about what we need now or what we should be looking for at this point would be to, to repeg on the luna blockchain or the lunk the lunk blockchain if you will uh we need to repeg onto that and then we need to incentivize people to build and grow on this so that people are not trading through binance that people are actually trading through the the blockchain if we provide incentives for that then it happens fairly quickly um so then the question becomes you know how do we get there well um I don't know all the answers, I, you know, in fairness. The, the question really is, could we get to a penny? Pennies 100x. In this, by, by the way, in this market, 
we're going to get to a penny. I don't think anybody should should worry about that. We will find ways and we will find methods by which that will happen. But you know, first things first, we're going to have to uh, start to build price action on this. And we're at the spot in this market where the um, Bitcoin is still the big dog in the yard. And a Bitcoin has to hit 50,000. It has to continue on to maybe 60 or even 70,000 in order to create an altcoin season, in order to saturate this market with the capital necessary for big moves like this. Now, the faster Bitcoin gets to these numbers, 50 and 70,000, uh, the more likely it is that we're going to get a cascade and a windfall, if you will, of capital entering into this market. And we're going to see you know, what you would call maybe an easy 10x from here. And if we can do that, then we can continue that on through the bull run, which will last for the next, I want to say, 600 days or so. So uh, the question is, can we hit a penny, a dime, a dollar? I don't think a dollar is in, in question at this point, unless we burn significant supply. And we haven't shown any reason to think that this chain will burn significant supply like I had hoped originally. However, uh, getting to a penny, 100x from here, that seems entirely doable with uh, a little bit more concerted effort, a little bit more building, a little bit more burn mechanism. Don't forget there's the fire token out there uh, that Levi's going to launch. There's little pieces to this equation uh, that continue burns from Binance. You know, there's, there's, there's people who support, unlike the validators, there are people who support the Luna Classic chain. Um, and then in closing, I do want to say this. Uh, it, it would be a shame to find out that the Luna Classic validators uh, most of the larger ones are actually growing and building on Luna because they're actively trying to stifle Luna Classic. That would be crazy, right? Um, that's just a wild conspiracy. But, uh, you know, if somebody would check that out, it sure be cool if you did. Um, but I have a feeling that we're going to find out that these Luna validators, that's what they care about. Uh, they care about killing Luna Classic. They care about moving it to Luna and... They care about all of that capital being combined. But that's just me giving you a wild conspiracy to guess at. But hey, go look around. See who your validators are. Try to figure it out for yourself. See if that's the case. If it's not, I stand corrected. But if I'm right, we have to start staking with people who care about us, not people who care about them. This is not financial advice. My name is Believes. I'm always right. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you stayed this long, I appreciate you. And uh, we'll talk to you again very, very soon. We have a giant update from Cryptonomy.Finance. Guys, brand new website, Solana. I'm going to earn 26 Solana for this move right here. About 2600 bucks. $2,600 for my tether over here. Uh, the XRP, 2313 Again, these do not unlock for a long period of time. I'm not going to unlock until November. But uh, I'm going to have 0.99. One extra Ethereum. Don't know how much it's going to be worth at that time. You never know. Worth nothing. Might be worth a lot. 0.08 Bitcoin. I'll have available at that point. 0.037 Bitcoin over here. And then 0.012 Bit. This launch pool. Now I'm locked in until November of 2024. You can see that my accrued interest so far, 57,281.92. Now you might be asking yourself, like, how are you earning this, uh, Blaze? It's because I signed up to Cryptonomy.Finance. I just put the money in. I gave myself a shot, gave it an opportunity. Uh, in the bull run, that's where the money gets made. So I'm going to let this ride for a little while. You let me know what you think.